Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about assess time estimations. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, unrelated to the video subject, it was posted on one of my old videos. Can you explain what is the process and the question that needs to be asked of the customer to get specifications before starting to give a time assessment? Do you have any specific tips? Yes, yes I do. Uh, so the thing that needs to be said now first and foremost is that time estimation is the hardest thing there is practically in a software project. Um, it's uh, almost always wrong. You still have to do it and the better you get at it the more confidence people will put in you and they feel they will trust you more and you will often have more influence the better you are at estimating accurately. But you're never gonna get it perfectly. It's, uh, it's, it's almost impossible. But you can be a little wrong or you can be really wrong and that's why you need to get good at it. And the way that I think about this at the very least is that there is no silver, there's, there is one silver bullet question that you can ask, but it's not gonna help you. On, it's, it is the question I think everybody should ask regardless of what level you are, but it's only when you get to a certain level of experience, both just career-wise, but also within the system where the uh, the answers to this question will make any type of sense to you. So there's a two-parter in order for you to be able to understand how long something's going to take in a system. One part is, as I was saying, your experience level, like just general work experience. You Do you know how long it takes you to build certain things? Do you roughly know how things work? And if you, the better you have, the better your understanding of the craft of coding and programming and all that stuff, the m more likely you are to have a good, um, a good gut feeling for how long something's going to take. But the other part is also the domain. So an example would be if I have a greenfield project where someone says, "Hey, Frederick, build me this thing here from scratch." And then it's pretty straightforward for me to estimate the amount of work that's going to go into that because I know that it's starting from scratch, which means that there are no, there's no existing code, there's no existing feature requirements or anything like that. But on the other hand, if I'm working for some company who has an existing system, well, then it gets a little bit more complicated because I, like, my estimate is tied into how the system works, and if my understanding of that system is poor. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to estimate it. This is the reason why even senior developers need an onboarding process in a new company because you simply don't know how the existing system works. No matter how long you worked, it's you know it's going to take you time before you know how all the everything fits together. But with that said, let's assist, because there are a few ways you can approach this. And one t rule of thumb here, guys, is that. Uh, you always have to account for that the customer or the stakeholder, whoever you're dealing with, like what what you can and cannot do as part of your process of figuring out what you need in order to make an estimation is down to the damn stakeholder. And guys, I have been in situations where the stakeholder has given me like the loosest, dumbest fucking specification you can imagine, and I've tried to in the nicest way possible say well I might need can I ask a few details no 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 we don't have those details you're just gonna have to estimate it and I go but I can't estimate this stuff without knowing the details oh no but just go for it like they will not they will not play ball because for reasons so you just give them an ass number and say this is probably gonna be wrong and kinda go with it but assuming that you have some type of freedom to set the workflow and like the customer or the stakeholder is willing to like to let you have complete freedom the best and silver bullet question you can ask is to ask could you please walk me through how the system is going to work or how the feature is going to work the whatever they want how is it going to work every single time you should do that for every story for every single sprint for whatever you're building for somebody else 
every single time regardless of if you're a junior level developer or you're a super senior developer it is the creme de la creme question to ask the reason why it is the creme de la creme question is because if they have to walk you through how everything's gonna work they're gonna have to think about what the system is supposed to be doing and you will be surprised at how often they don't know how the system is supposed to work and here comes the kicker the, because this is just the entry question this is the thing that kind of starts everything else and when they start talking and uh, well I've seen I mean everything from like I've been in conversations with the stakeholder where they come into and come into the room and they say oh I have this idea and I go okay cool how is it gonna work and then they kind of start in their head they have no screens like for off the UI or like they have nothing they literally have an idea and then they try to start explaining it and I try my best because I mean it's not like it's not about sabotaging people it is about leading them through to the realization that they are not trying to take what they have in their head and give that to another person who's going to do something for them and it is in both of our, of our interests that that process work so if they have not done their job I can't do my job that's what you're trying to get them to understand and the better you get that this part the better you're going to be at estimating time the better you're going to be in like for everything ideally you want to work as well in an MVP fashion but that's not always possible where you estimate the smallest amount of work always because the smaller the scope the easier it is to know how long something takes but this even just even if you're doing waterfall even for your estimating two years worth of uh, work this is the way you should do it at least in my opinion because what's going to happen is that they're going to realize things along the way uh, through this journey the first thing uh, it's an example they're going to realize is that if they don't have any artboards how will we know how the UI is going to look and so they're going to if they're when they're usually not dumb people they're usually very clever people it's just they're on the inexperienced in how to set the specification they're gonna say okay cool I'll, I'll draw something up and then you just explain to them yeah sure uh, something simple just so we kinda understand like how the structures are gonna look and stuff like that we can get into the details of design later on and then they will come back and then when they have the design then you ask them okay what and then they show you oh this is the screen that this does it does this and that and that and then you just ask them okay so if I click that button what happens and they should have an answer for every question you ask them about what happens if I click that what happens if I do that what happens if I uh, do that while that is happening and you ask these sorts of questions but because you're trying to figure out how they think that the system is supposed to work and you will be surprised at how it's almost impossible I would say especially for a lot this is why MVP exists in the first place uh, I argue because it, the larger the system the more likely you are to just forget about the details of certain aspects of how things are supposed to work and this is what you do you continuously fire questions at them until you feel that like you have a clear picture of all the pieces that make sense and this is the problem for junior developers you don't know unfortunately all the de like you you don't have the experience to know how what you need to ask in many cases but you still should still do this because the more you do it the better you're gonna get at it and I promise you by the time you're a senior software developer or an architect this is like all you do I swear this is what this is the bulk of what you do if you're in technical sales or architecture or anything like that you're simply trying to guide the customer or the stakeholder into the realization of what is it that I am actually buying from these people so what I want you to take away from this is number one uh, there are no magical questions so to speak to get a good estimation going or to get a good scope declaration from a customer or a stakeholder the best way for you to think is in an MVP fashion if at all possible you want to deliver the smallest thing or always estimate the smallest amount of work possible that still delivers value that's not always possible because uh, you have to account for that the customer might have their own needs and so forth but you can at least try to keep the workload small uh, and the silver bullet question is just a starting point and that question is could you please walk me through uh, how these how this insert blank is going to work and then have them explain it to you 
because it's the way it's the easiest way for you to then ask follow-up questions until you have no more questions and by the end of that conversation you might have to iterate several times but you will have a fairly good idea of a lot of the things that make up the estimation and then you will be able to give some type of estimate and one bonus rule never ever let a customer just kinda wing it because especially if you're working as a freelancer or something like that it is very important that you write down the specification in some fashion you need to document the agreement of how things are supposed to work that's why in many cases we have stories or story cards epics and so forth because you especially on a larger project you will not be able to remember and they are not going to remember what they said and you don't want to be in that situation where there's a discrepancy or there's some misunderstanding of what was expected and what you actually delivered. Uh, it's never fun to have that argument with anybody and it's especially not very fun to be there if there, like, there's a contract or something like that. So make sure that you always put things on paper. Have a great day.